Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sadko here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the difference between NVIDIA and AMD cards. Specifically in terms of crypto mining, but uh, we can talk a little bit about gaming as well. So first and foremost, all GPUs right now are in extremely high demand, and I actually have to emphasize extremely high. So, uh, first and foremost, we'll, we'll take a look at NVIDIA. <clears throat> And this is basically NVIDIA's flagship card, the 1080 Ti. Now, I know there is the Titan, and there is also the Titan V out now, the Volta card, but those are uh, thousands of dollars. Uh, the Titan is uh, quite expensive. It's more of a vanity card, and it's not particularly any more useful than the 1080 Ti. It's just for those who pretty much have a lot of money and just want the best card. Now, the NVIDIA Volta is made from the Volta series, which is a completely uh, higher-end, futuristic sort of series of video cards, and they're about $3,000 a piece. So we're not really going to be talking about them. We're just going to be talking about the consumer-grade cards because the Volta is typically used as a workstation card for simulations, uh, weather simulations, universal... Uh, galaxy forming simulations and that sort of thing where they have a whole bunch of them and working on a similar problem. So today we'll talk about the 1080 Ti and the Vega 64 particularly. So I want to take a look at the prices here. So if you go to Newegg and you look at the prices, wow, is the first thing you see is that they're incredibly expensive. Uh, the 1080 Ti is approximately seven to eight hundred ish dollars normally retail. Uh, but with the incredible demand of crypto mining, prices have gone through the roof. So you can check your local area Craigslist, offer up those sort of things, and you're going to see these cards going for twelve to thirteen hundred dollars. And even um, older cards like a GTX 980, uh, sometimes you'll see them five, six, seven hundred dollars or more, even though they're not worth pretty much anything near that. Uh, the demand is coming from crypto and there just isn't enough to go around. So as you can see, the GTX 1080 Ti is really overpriced right now by anywhere from uh, a simple five to six, seven hundred dollars. And the Vega 64 is also incredibly overpriced right now. In fact, it's on average about the same price as the GTX 1080 Ti, even though it is not nearly as powerful as the GTX 1080 Ti. So uh, AMD cards are typically a little less powerful than the than their nvidia counterpart usually nvidia comes out with a new series like the 900 series the 10 uh, series and now maybe even the 1100 series if that's what they choose to come out with and the nvidia cards are typically always a little bit more costly and a little bit more effective than amd cards but they do have their differences so as you can see even the vega 64 right now is incredibly overpriced and uh, if you're going to pay 1200 dollars for a vega 64 you might as well go with a NVIDIA card. So I want to look at Mining Pool Hub here real quick. And as you can see, there's AMD. You can switch to AMD. And AMD are almost always better at Ethereum and particularly Kryptonite um, as opposed to NVIDIA, whereas NVIDIA is typically better at pretty much everything else. As you can see, Kryptonite is way down at the bottom here. Ethereum is second, whereas AMD Ethereum is number one and crypto night is not nearly as low so if somebody came up to me and said hey i will give you 100 cards of your choice to mine with and of course only relying on the vega 64 or the 1080 ti for this conversation i would probably choose 80 to 90 percent nvidia and then the remaining percentage amd where i could set the amd up to mine crypto night and uh you know, mine Electronium or some, or some kind of other obscure altcoin like that that has the Kryptonite algorithm. And then later when the price increases, sell that. So just essentially hodl and hodl and hodl like Electronium or something, and then later sell it if the price increases later on. Whereas my NVIDIA cards would be my main cards that would be mining uh, mostly Equihash. And then I would, you know, maybe transform it or auto exchange it to, to Litecoin or something like that, or even just keep the Zcash. So uh, you can even go on to what to mine here. And if you look at the Vega 64, uh, you can press one here, get rid of that. And the Vega 64, as you can see, the Kryptonite Equihash is 1850. Ethereum is 40 mega hash. And if we take that away and put in a 1080 Ti, you can see the Kryptonite algorithm 
is vastly lower at 830 hash, whereas it's only 35 mega hash for Ethereum. So now you might come back to thinking, wait, I thought that the NVIDIA cards are typically better for gaming, gets you higher frame rates, and typically better for mining. Well, it is, but it depends on what algorithm you're talking about. Now we have uh, 11080 Ti with Equihash at 685 hash rate. And if you look at the Vega 64, it's only 450. So this is their flagship card, the AMD, and this is essentially the flagship card of NVIDIA. And now I know there is the Titan for NVIDIA, but honestly, it's it's marginally maybe 5 to 10% faster than uh, the 1080 Ti, and you're going to pay a lot more for it. So it's extremely inefficient to buy for cryptocurrency. And that's why you never see it even... Um, even brought to light in terms of crypto uh, crypto mining conversations and discussions. You don't even see it on what to mine, um, including the NVIDIA Volta, which would mine much, much faster than a 1080 Ti, but for a $3,000 price tag, it's just extremely inefficient. Um, so I kind of wanted to go to this article here and talk about this. So AMD and NVIDIA, the battle of stream processors. Unlike CPUs, which typically have one to eight cores, GPUs come with a smaller cores, um, come with a lot of smaller cores called stream processors. While each of these stream processors doesn't have near as much computing performance as a CPU core, they work together to process visual data much more efficiently, allowing for a significantly improved graphical, graphical performance. Uh, so not all stream processors are alike. NVIDIA takes the approach of creating fewer, more capable stream processors, allowing for slightly more complex calculations. And this makes NVIDIA cards not, uh, excel not only at gaming, but also at many other data processing applications, such as complex finance and informatics, as, as said earlier with the uh, Volta, and it's usually used for workstation, and honestly, it's like science methods such as, uh, you know, um, simulating weather and maybe the, the formation of a solar system or something like that where you need tons and tons of cards to uh, all the individual little atoms and such. Uh, AMD takes a different approach by creating smaller, less complex stream processors. Excuse me. Uh, though the processors are not as capable, uh, the difference is made up by quantity because they have a lot of smaller processors that can handle simple calculations. They particularly excel at tasks such as cryptocurrency mining, which requires simple calculations to be formed over and over and over. Uh, CPU and GPU compatibility. When considering system compatibility, one frequently asked question is, can AMD NVIDIA cards work with an Intel slash AMD processor? Fortunately, it doesn't matter what processor you have. An AMD card will work just as well with an Intel and AMD processors, and an NVIDIA card will do the same. However, there are a few considerations for those who plan on utilizing AMD's Crossfire or NVIDIA's SLI features. Crossfire and SLI will allow you to use more than one GPU at the same time, which often dramatically increases the video's performance. Uh, but be wary, if the game you are playing does not support SLI or Crossfire, you won't get you won't get any benefit at all from your second card. And that's kind of why I say to stay away from SLI. Um, I do have SLI in my computer. I have two, uh, two 980s and a, and a 1080 now. And I used to use SLI with my 980s. And it's honestly not that great. Um, sure, you get a little bit of, perf uh, of improved performance, particularly on games like Fallout 4 or uh, you know various other games, really. But uh, most games don't support SLI. And therefore, it's kind of a waste of money um, in terms of gaming. But to each his own. And I know that everybody wants to build that incredibly awesome rig. But um, it's in the end, it's not really worth it. But of course, you can put those cards to work when you're not gaming and mine cryptocurrency. So I just wanted to cover NVIDIA and AMD separately here and talk about the differences between them. So in terms of cr uh, cryptocurrency... Um, and that's, you know, what my channel's all about, and that's what we're talking about here. Uh, NVIDIA is much better at Equihash, as I said before. So it, it always just kind of dominates the, uh, the profits, usually. And once in a while, AMD will uh, come ahead of uh, NVIDIA and outperform it. But it's usually for a short while, and it's usually pretty ephemeral. Uh, like from time to time, uh, if you look at the nice hash profit calculator, uh, Kryptonite will be on the top, and AMD, the Vega 64, will be beating the uh, GTX 1080 Ti. But it's usually short-lived. Again, it's very ephemeral. 
And NVIDIA is usually almost always at the top mining Equihash. And, um, but if you do want to mine Ethereum directly, uh, there is, uh, it's unequivocally better. Uh, AMD are unequivocally better at Ethereum than NVIDIA. And it's just because of the way that they process the information and they do it slightly different from each other. But for the most part, I choose NVIDIA over AMD pretty much any day. And as I said before, in that hypothetical situation I set up, I would probably have, you know, 80 to 90 NVIDIA cards. And I know it's a pretty hypothetical situation, but it kind of helps you understand the situation. I'd have 80 or 90 NVIDIA cards mining away on Equihash uh, or NIST 5. And on the other end, I would have my AMD cards probably set to Crypto Knight. And I know that's strange because, as you can see, that, uh, you know, they're better at Ethereum and they're even better at Equihash than Crypto Knight itself. However, Crypto Knight is kind of an odd algorithm. Uh, most people mine Crypto Knight with their processor. So if you have like nice hash or something like that, usually your processor um, is only set to Crypto Knight and then your GPUs are mining something else. And that create, kind of creates a separate market for everybody that everybody can everybody can use their CPUs to mine crypto night but it's a very very slow rate uh, but not everybody can use their GPUs to mine crypto night sure you can do it with Nvidia but you're gonna suffer a huge profit loss and with AMD you could essentially for example mine electronium very very fast and develop hundreds or, or possibly even thousands of electronium and then if electronium ever goes to ten twenty hundred dollars uh, you would actually have quite a bit of profit there and so it's more of a, a hodling situation for me you know a, a long-term investment and my AMDs would be working on that whereas my NVIDIA's would be always mining the best algorithm like Equihash or NIST 5. So I just wanted to tell you guys the difference between the two cards and kind of put it briefly make a quick video here but I hope you guys enjoyed it and as usual I will see you guys next time.